In number one, we need to factor completely. Both expressions have a common factor of x plus 3, so I want to pull out the x plus 3. And the other two terms get put in the second factor. I need to look at this second factor to check to see if I could factor it again, and I can. x cubed and x have a common factor of x, so I pull out the x, and I'll have x minus 1 as the quotient. x squared minus 1, rather, is the difference of two perfect squares. So I want to take and factor this again, and that factor is x plus 1 times x minus 1. The final answer is all of the factors from this expression. So I have to bring down the x, but I also need to bring down the x plus 3. Number two, we have a rational equation. The first step with a rational equation is to get all of the denominators the same, so then we can cancel them out, and only can we cancel them out um, when we have an equation. So we want to factor any expression in the denominator that is factorable. So I want each denominator to have the exact same factors. In the middle of the equation with the expression 1 over 2 minus x, this is very similar to this, but it's not exactly the same. So to switch it to x minus 2, I have to multiply this by a negative 1. And a negative 1 times a negative 1 changes that to, or negative 1 times that fraction, which is negative, changes it to a positive. So now I have the x minus 2, and I also need the x plus 2, so I'm going to multiply this by x plus 2. And whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. And this one times x minus 2. So that they all have a common denominator, now I can cross it off. So 3x minus 6 plus x plus 2 equals 24. So I want to combine 3x and x to get 4x. Negative 6 plus 2 is a negative 4 equals 24. Add the 4 over, and 4x equals 28. Divide by 4, and x equals 7. And number 3, to express this fraction as a new fraction with a rational denominator, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. And the conjugate of 3 minus radical 2 is 3 plus radical 2. Multiplying that binomial times 5, we get 15 plus 5 radical 2. And since the denominator, since those two expressions that I'm multiplying are conjugates, I only need to do the first and last of FOIL. So 3 times 3, 9 minus radical 2 times radical 2 is 2. So final answer is going to be 15 plus 5 radical 2 over 7, as we can't divide 15 and 5 by 7. In number 4, we have a binary operation that's defined by this here. So if I'm going to find 7 diamond 4, that's telling me that m is 7, n is 4, and I plug it in here. So I'm going to do 2 times 7 minus 4, and then square it. We have 14 minus 4, which is 10, and then 10 squared is 100. And last on the front, determine the value of k that will make the roots of the equation equal. Well, I have roots that are equal when the factors are equal. So x, x, here's the product of those two numbers here that fill the factors. So that must be negative 7 times negative 7 to get the positive. The signs have to be the same. And since this was a negative, I know it's going to be negative. So if I were to multiply, I'd get x squared minus 14x plus 49. So here's the k, and k is equal to 14. Another way to do this is to find the discriminant, or set the discriminant equal to 0. That's when we have equal roots. So our b is our k. So negative k squared minus 4 times 1 times 49 equals 0. So now I have k squared minus, I'm going to multiply 4 times 49. And we get 196. I'm going to solve it by the square root method. So k squared equals 196. Take the square root. And k is equal to plus or minus 14.
So we can see when we solve it by the square root method, we actually get the plus or minus 14, and both solutions actually work. Because if I multiply these two, negative 7 times negative 7, I get the um, 49. And then when I plug in a negative of a negative 14, that would change it to x squared plus 14x plus 49, which would still have the roots, x plus 7, x plus 7, or factors, which give us the roots, negative 7, negative 7. The roots are still equal, and then we saw with it being a positive 14 how I'd get the negative 7. So we actually get both solutions, okay, there is two, when we solve by using the discriminant. On the back side, find the difference, so I'm going to distribute the negative and combine like terms. So minus 1 fifth x squared plus 5 6 x minus 7. So I combine the x squared with this x squared term. 3 fifths and a negative 1 fifth is 2 fifths. The x is negative 2 6 plus 5 6 is 3 6, and then negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. I just need to reduce this, and we're done. 3, 6 reduces to 1 half. Solve and check. So let's set up and solve this system algebraically. So if y is equal to x squared minus 6x, I'm going to substitute that up here. So now the equation would be x squared minus 6x plus 15 equals 2x. I'm going to bring the 2x over by subtraction, which would give me negative 8, because negative 6 minus 2. And then factor x minus 5, x minus 3. And I get the solutions 5 and 3. So now when I have x, so when x equals 5, the y value is 5 squared minus 6 times 5. 25 minus 30 is negative 5. So my answer, again, when you solve a system, it's where did they intersect? They intersect at 5, negative 5. And then when x equals 3, y is equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3. So 9 minus 18 is negative 9. So the answer is 5, negative 5, and 3, negative 9. Graphing a complex number. I'm going to graph negative 7 plus 7. So on the real axis, I go left 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put the dot and then line up your ruler from the origin is the arrow. In which quadrant? This is quadrant 2 and find its magnitude or size. So we make a right triangle so that we can use Pythagorean theorem as this is a right angle in the coordinate plane. So this was 7, this was 7, so 7 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. 49 and 49 is 98. Take the square root and break it down 49 and 2 plus or minus, rejecting the negative because it's a length. Our magnitude equals 7 radical 2. Cube root of 64 is 4, and then x to the we divide 27 divided by 3 is 9. And last, find the roots to the nearest tenth. Well, let's distribute, remove parentheses. x squared minus 3x plus 3x. Um, I'm bringing the 5 over at the same time by subtracting it to get it equal to 0. These cancel, and we get x squared minus 5 equals 0. I can solve it by the uh, quadratic formula, but I'm also going to move the 5 back over, and I'm, I'm going to solve it now using the square root method. So x is equal to plus or minus radical 5. So the one answer, because I have to round to the nearest tenth, is the plus radical 5, and the other one's the negative. So approximately, because we have to round, the square root of 5 is about 2.2 for one value of x, and then negative 2.2 for the other.